He's ready. Always. You ready for us? Together. I'm ready. You ready? Hey, what's up, everybody? It is podcast time. Yay. 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 So, over here to the right. Yes. My right, your left. Um, my beautiful, wonderful, amazing wife, Maddie, over here to my left, your right. And behind the camera on the mic, DJ K Dizzle. Caleb Barfield. She's like C Dizzle. C Dizzle. Yeah, it's not a K. Well, it's wrong. Feels like a K. C. Caleb. It says the it says the word K. Yeah. yeah. C A L E B. Caleb. 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 No. <laughs> hey, what's that candy you were eating this morning for trunk or treat? I didn't eat it. What? Well, what you bought it for trunk or treat? Yeah. What is it? What's the name of it? Whoopa. I'm sorry. Whoopa. Oh, Maybe whoppers. A yeah. whoopa. Whoppers. Whoppers. Yeah. I got I got clown. Malt. I got clown this morning because apparently it's whoppers and not whoopers. Yeah, yeah. W H makes a. There's a lot of words that you say that it's. Oh um, no! This where this podcast is going. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's do oh, guess what no, 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 no. Yes, what he's saying. Yes, what he's saying. Let's do it. Okay, let's let's um, let's let's do the one that you did the other day. <laughs> Which the, one? The when Simeon said I, I. I took this. Oh, uh, say this word and see what Maddie. I heard you say it. Acetaminophen. <laughs> yeah, acetaminophen. I heard acetaminophen. you say it. That's good. Sam said acetaminophen, and Tobin said, "A uh, what? Uh, yeah. What do you what um what does a pickle come from? Cucumba. 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 I love that. It's my favorite one. Cucumba. It was another one that was around that same. This. The song, the, the hippo song. Uh, uh, the, yeah. How do you say how do you say hippopotamus? Hippopotamus. Hippopotamus. Do we want to sing the song? <laughs> We're not singing the H-I-P song. H I P for the hip. P O P O for the hippo. For I T M U S for the hippopotamus. <laughs> so, um, I think that is. I, I love that it's very unique to who you are and that you don't try to um, say acetaminophen because you are in South Carolina. I love that your African accent shines through in your conversations. And yeah. flip side is it was I something. His Nigerian accent is what it, well, the correct thing I mean, is. Yeah, right? Nigerian African accent. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. But the um, the flip side of that is whenever you came here, you were a little nervous about getting up speaking in front of kids each week yeah. with that accent. Yeah. And has it hind- and, and my response was, I think it's amazing. It's not going to hinder you at all. You've gotten up on stage, done announcements, taken up offering things of that nature on stage on Sunday mornings. Yeah. You speak into the kids' lives every week. Has the accent hindered you at all? Well, I would say no, um, but at the same time, like sometimes during the the message, um, I find myself saying words that I know they do not understand what I'm saying. <laughs> so I always like, I'm always like, oh, y'all say this, um, and then Carson actually helps me a lot, and it's just like, this is the right way to say. It. I'm like, my bad, you know, I'm still a work in progress. Um, but um, just going, being in America for ten years has helped me able to like you know, say 90% of the stuff I'm saying in a way they can understand yeah. it. But then I just surprise them with that one word. I love it. So they like in, it. in context, I'm, I'm sure they understand it, but they love it. So I love it so much. Uh, we just came through our first hurricane. Yeah. Your first hurricane here? Yeah, I'll say it's my first one. For the season. When, for the season. For the season. Right. But, it, but was first. it your first hurricane here? In Myrtle Beach, yeah. Houston, yeah. you had one that flooded really badly. Yeah. Yeah, and well, I think even when I was playing soccer here, there was there was supposed to be one, but it ended up being a flash flood um, in in our soccer field. Like and so. May experienced it as well. Her yeah. first one. Yeah, she did. May. And <laughs> she was scared. <laughs> like I was, I was on the phone talking to my family by the window, and she's like, she was on. I think I guess she looked up all the stuff on Google, <laughs> and she's like, "You're not supposed to be by the window, you know." And I think her apartment complex, they told everybody, send a message out that take out all your stuff in the balcony, your chairs, and all that. So when I was just on the in the in front of the um, dividers and all that talking, she's like, "Please stay away, stay away from it." Aww. And whenever the wind came strong, 
she was like jumping and stuff. So yeah, it's incredible. It's great. Um, yesterday in our service, we uh, during our offering time, we said, "Hey, anything that comes in today, we're going to give to." Um, relief, disaster relief. And I don't know the exact total yet. I'm sure Pastor Tony has it and we're doing this um, earlier than it may come through any time now, but uh, definitely over $20,000 yesterday that we have to donate to disaster relief, have a few different causes that we are doing. Um, but thankfully, thank, thank you all who gave. And I would just say this, you know, like as stuff like this happens, I said yesterday when I was taking up the offer and I said yesterday that it, you know, the scripture where it says it's more blessed to give than to receive comes alive in that moment, right? Like yeah. that could have been us. Yeah. Um, but I'm so thankful Sunday morning instead of a church in Tennessee taking up an offering for our community, we were able to take up an offering to help other communities. And so um, truly the scripture is more blessed to give than to receive came alive yesterday in a, in a whole new way. You know, we say it at Christmas a lot, you know, Christmas is coming. We're like, Oh, it's more, you know, you try to teach your kids. Oh, it's more blessed to give than to receive. But uh, probably moments like yesterday, hopefully that scripture comes alive even more. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah I thought it was amazing um, how you opened the service. Um, Cause a lot of times we don't put things in perspective or like we don't put things in like, a scenario where it's like what if this happened mm -hmm. what if that happened and that honestly changes like your heart in situations where you feel like everything is calm yeah. you know everything is peaceful which it is peaceful when you put yourself in that mindset it's like wow like i am even so much more blessed than i am yeah. and then it makes it so much easier for you to actually like give other people who are i um, going through things that you could have easily mm -hmm. gone through so yeah great. around here in cherry grove area like upper upper south carolina north myrtle beach area um got a little got got hit a little hard and then garden city Polly's island um lower ori county that area kind of got hit um flooding flooding they with, always with some flood. flooding yeah when there's like yeah. high tide or king tide yeah they tend to flood there I told somebody after church, they were like, well, why aren't we helping our own community? I'm like, man, there's a big difference in your house flooding from a storm surge and your roof getting ripped off. Yeah. Or not even having a house. You know, or your house getting blown away because, you know, of, of what came through. So anyways, we are praying for the people in Florida, for all of you um, who have connections down there. Don't, don't just let this be a this week thing. Keep connected with those people and um, stay encouraging them in because it's, uh, you know, we, we've been through, Maddie and I have been through hurricanes, so we understand the aftermath and the difficulty. You know, people come in really strong at first wanting to help, but then eventually it just wears off. And, um, you know, when the need's not in front of your eyes, you forget about it. So um, continue to reach out to those people in, in Florida and love on them, pray for them. And, man, it's, it's a tough time down there praying for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're sponsored this week by Alani and Food Line Water. It'd be really cool if we were sponsored by Alani. <laughs> we are not, but Tiana Alani and Scarlett's sponsored by Alani? Yes, they do. Hey, um, we love y'all. Thank you for all you so do. Good. Um, click here to buy some Alani. Is hey, so that what you do? <laughs> I don't know. We don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> click the link attached. In the click video. the link attached. Click the link. And don't attach the link. I'm just <laughs> kidding. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. But if you wanted to, I mean, Alani, there's 13 people that work here, and we all love your drinks. Mm. Not all of us. Everybody but the... Um, well, not everybody. Um, Johnny doesn't drink caffeine anymore. Mm. Pastor he did, Cliff. though. Pastor Cliff will drink he one. Does? Yes, yeah. he does. He has asked wow. me for some whenever he's working really hard. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm that. You're that guy? I'm that child in the family. I'm you drink sorry. water. What else? Um... Juices. Water. Uh, um, I do. You do juices. juices. Yeah. Um, smoothies. Smoothies. smoothies With spinach. <laughs> Had plenty no of frozen of spinach, spinach in my yeah. freezer. By the drink him. juices, like um, one of those. Is it trop tropical? Tropical smoothie. Tropicana. Tropicana. Oh, tropical. Tropicana. It's tropicana. a juice. I think so. Yes, it's a brand. It's a brand. Oh, sorry. You mean like the type of juice, like Tropicana no. juice? Just, tropicana, yeah, just tropicana. juice. Yeah. yeah. You I really should probably drink Juicy Juice because that's 100% juice. Tropicana is not. It's not? No. I didn't know that you learn something new every day, I guess. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I need yeah. to fact check myself. No coffee either, right? Coffee, no. No caffeine. 
No, I actually I went to Dunkin' Donuts two days ago and to get donuts. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get some um, co- coffee, but the de- decaf. De- it's decaf, mm-hmm. but does that decaf mean it's still coffee, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I got decaf, um, one of those frappuccinos, pumpkin spice pack frappuccinos. Did so, you like jitter from, just from the sugar? Um, no, no. <laughs> Did you get it? But the, when whenever I do drink coffee, like I feel like my my Heart is like, mm-hmm. pal- is it palpitating or pal- pal- palpitating? Palpitating. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's how she would feel too. Yeah. And then oh I kind of started to enjoy that feeling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so unhealthy. I think some Tropicana <laughs> so is um, 100%, yeah. but not all of it. Just depends on what so you So unhealthy. Mm. Um, so let's, let <laughs> uh, she's Googling Tropicana for you to find out I'll what's healthy. I was fact checking myself. <laughs> Because I'm not like our son who will say something and just because he says yeah, it. Yeah, he believes it. So, <laughs> um, oh. He makes declarations. Yes. Passionate declarations. And because he does that, it's like he believes what he says. Mm. And some of the times we're like, Caleb, that's not true. You're like, I need to fact check you fact right, check now, you right now. I don't know if that's true or Most not. Most of the time it is. Most of the time. But I love those times when it's not. I and do I'm too. Like, oh, you are wrong, <laughs> sucker. Uh, that's great. He's a good kid. He's good. Kid. He's awesome. He's a good young man. Um, Wait, I have a question. Ask away. Both of you. So would you go two weeks without any ca- any kind of caffeine? Yeah, we have. We, we do, do it through sacred season. season. Oh, okay. So we've done okay. it a month. Yeah. Okay, cool. Interesting. Just wondering, because I'd be asking my girl sometimes, I'm like, if you can't go two weeks without it, then is it not a problem that you're drink and stuff like that you know mm-hmm. but then if there's like you're able to like just be like oh you two weeks i won't drink it no problem then that means okay there's a healthy like relationship you have yeah it, you I, know? I i i find- think i just started drinking caffeine again after like okay. a month i didn't drink yeah, it. I, I will go weeks without having it okay for me it's more um i enjoy coffee in the morning reading my bible i enjoy that okay. i enjoy um I mean, I, I'm not really a huge, like, energy drink guy. Um, Honestly, it's, I don't think it's for the energy. I don't need the caffeine. I really like the taste. The like, taste, I love taste. juice, like Kool-Aid, yeah. any kind of, like, if I could put a sh- packet of flavor in my water, I want to drink it. I just like flavor. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. And I really That's love good. this blue slush flavor. Thankfully, all the... My favorite. Thankfully, we don't have a lot of people that watch this, so all the haters aren't on the podcast right now telling us how unhealthy energy drinks are for you. They are. It's, it is. How, how, what, what is this compared to a cup of coffee? This is better. It's only has 10 calories. No, I'm talking about caf, uh, cal- um, caffeine-wise. 200 milligrams. Yikes. So that's like... A cup of coffee has what, two, about 60 or 80? 80. 80. Nor- most of the time, about 80. Yeah. So mm-hmm. like if you got a... Giant you cup got of a venti from... Um, Starbucks. Starbucks, and I had three shots of espresso. It's the same thing. Yikes. One eight-ounce cup of coffee will range between 70 and 140 milligrams of caffeine. Yeah, it just depends. But on, on average, that. about 95. Yeah. So this actually is... 95? Pro- so two. Yeah. So it's fine. We're good. We're good. As long as you don't drink the cup of coffee in the morning, too. Yeah, and... and- well, I did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just ate a caffeinated donut, and and it's it's weird because um, I did. It, it's weird because I think I've seen people like Sim one day. He was he like, he like drank like two of them and had cracked the third one. Not of these, but like it was when Bang was, was Bang. High. Yeah, I'm like Sim, like bro, you can't have three of them in a day. <laughs> like, you're gonna, you're gonna, your heart's gonna explode. Yeah, so they're not good for you. It's not like you can. Yeah. It's not water. So last podcast, we talked about how many times we eat fast food a day. I mean, a week. How many times do you eat fast food a week? Um, f- define fast food. Because apparently, Chipotle. Apparently, Chipotle is fast food. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, A week, I'd say probably six, seven yeah. times. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. I'm not just saying like the unhealthy fast food, like McDonald's. Okay. I'm talking about like, hey, life is busy. Let me pick up a quick meal so okay. that I because okay. I don't have time to cook or whatever. Yeah, I'll say. I'll say. Um, okay, maybe not six. All right, I'll say like maybe 
Five. Five times. Yeah. Five, six times on average. Yeah, Us three. as well, probably. Right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we pick up something every day for lunch here. Yeah. Yeah, we got to, we, listen, yeah. you ain't got to yeah. convince me. I know. So, that definitely is five days. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> that's so unhealthy that we eat out all the time. Yeah. Sometimes it's not um, bad that we, like, the stuff we eat isn't always bad. No. So, it's just the fact that it's just easier. Whenever we did the Daniel fast one time, we, was awful. We it was the first time I ever ate um, Chipotle. Yeah. And um, they had tofu. tofu? Oh, yeah, sofritas. Sofritas. Sofritas, yeah, yeah. It was so good. It's so good. I thought it's like the a first sponge. Time I, first time. No, it's not. It is. No more tofu is like a sponge. It is but because it one, takes up the flavor of but, whatever but not it's cooked in. Chipotle is, Chipotle is, Chipotle is really like really, like the first time, have you had it? But it still takes up the flavor, so it's like a sponge. It sucks oh, yeah, in yeah, the flavor. Yeah, yeah. And it, so yeah. it tasted like steak. Yeah, it really did. Right, like, but it's like mm-hmm. not. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's not. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, not. but it's it's really really. Good. Yeah, but whenever tofu? you're fasting, it is so good. Yeah. So let's talk sacred season because you've been through sacred season with oh us before. My days. Wow. Um, it's it's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing go ahead, at? Go ahead. I, I'm afraid you know you know what I'm laughing. But so ahead. in the middle of sacred season, you got drafted. Yeah. And you gave up on your fast. Yeah. So this year we're gonna finish strong. Yeah. Twenty one days. We can do it. Yeah. <laughs> for sure um little backstory i was doing sacred season with the church and it was honestly one of the most amazing seasons in my whole life mm-hmm. um didn't even know i was gonna get drafted because most people that get drafted are invited to the um combine wasn't invited to the combine had two messed up knees um joined the church or i didn't join the church or i joined the church in the sacred season and I'm in class, um, my last semester in college, and I get a call. People get multiple calls, and they're like, man, you got drafted. And I was like, what? That's amazing. Um, couldn't believe picture. it. I know. And then I freaked out, and I was like, man, I need to eat food now that I'm. Because you weren't eating meat. I wasn't eating meat. I need to eat. We're, um, we were doing a Dan- the Daniel fast. Yeah, Daniel so, fast. So we were doing plants, yeah, stuff from the ground. Stuff from the ground, yeah, yeah. no sugars, no um, no processed stuff. So yeah. it was all, yeah. you know, yeah. veggies and fruits. and. It was tough, man. So <laughs> tough. I remember doing lots of, like, wheat um, tortillas and then putting peanut butter on it. All and natural like, peanut oh, butter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. The one you uh, stir. Oh, uh, it's so um, gross. But, but, yeah, my first day in preseason, I ate Chipotle. I ate meat. And long story cut short, I got cut. <laughs> All right, what are we talking about next? It's almost sacred season. <laughs> it's almost sacred season. Yeah. So this this year, um, from someone who has obviously we have been a part of sacred season from the start. From someone outside looking in, you've heard of some of the incredible stories of sacred mm-hmm. season here. You've watched them happen. As you're going into sacred season, and I say going in, I mean it's October third um, today. So whatever day you're watching this, just Happy know, birthday, Cammy. Just know we recorded this on October third. As you're going into sacred season, you got October, November, December. You're looking ahead. We're already talking about it. Um, what's your what's what's your thoughts? What's your emotions? What are you thinking about as you're entering into this season? Um. Well, like going to season like this, like being actually in the church, like being plugged into the church. I'm just I'm just excited to actually see like how people also around the church, like my staff, coworkers, you guys like are going to be going out like like how your lives are gonna look during the season. Mm-hmm. You know, because I think um while I was playing soccer, um you know, I just call, come and see people on Sundays, you know, but now, like, actually doing it day by day. One thing I realized that for me, like, while I was doing the sacred season with you guys or doing any kind of fast period is as you go throughout the day, you're easily angered, you know, you're easily. So, like, it's interesting to actually, like, just walk with um, a family now, like, day in, day out, and to see, like, how people navigate, um, you know, the fleshly desires and things that it's just so easy for them to um, get mad at somebody. Um, and 
mess up in your not really mess up but mm -hmm. you know go and eat stuff that you probably sure. shouldn't eat you know so i think that's one thing for sure for me um also like um god has just been tugging in my heart to be be expectant because a lot of a lot of times i'm not very expectant about like a lot of things you know i just do things and then whenever god does it it's just a surprise um for me um in his blessings but for me now especially with the season that we're the series we're doing um i feel like god is just um telling me hey be expectant about the blessings i'm gonna do in your life mm. you know and and so for me like going into a season like this i'm trying to have a mindset of you know what god is going to meet me here with some kind of blessing that's going to blow my mind you know so for me i'm i'm excited about that. i agree totally one of my things in sacred season from the first year it started one of the things the lord spoke over me um was in the season i want you to sow with the expectation of reaping you know most of the time as i'm talking about giving in the church most of the time and i'm coming to you next talking about sacred season what your thoughts are this year going into it so be thinking um but most of the time when i talk about giving it's you give because god is faithful and because you want to be faithful in, in my head like that's the reason i give because scripture tells me to i want to give i want to be faithful this is why i give and then like this one time a year where i just completely turn my 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 thoughts or my my conversations when it comes to giving and i know what god has spoken over this season and i've seen him do it over and over and over and over and over again yeah. and in, during this season he said i want my church to sow with the expectation of reaping and you know i always say no no farmer goes into the field with a handful of seed and throws it in the ground and doesn't expect a harvest to come up. That's good. And so when we have seed in our hand and we sow it into soil, yeah. we should expect yeah. a harvest Great. to come back. And yeah. so, so yeah, there's an expectation financially, spiritually, emotionally. I believe, I believe we're going to see God do supernatural, crazy, awesome, supernatural things in sacred season. I really do. Amen. What's your thoughts? You've been a part of, Probably done this seven or eight years now. Is that right? I don't know. I just follow you. <laughs> <laughs> what's your thoughts? You've been through them. You, you hear us talking about it. You hear it coming. What's, what's your thoughts going into sacred season this year? Um, I think with the move to the larger facility, so yeah. then there are um, kind of quadruple the amount of people that we've been able to reach before through sacred season I am expecting huge things to happen for so many people. Normally, you know, it's been around, you know, three, 400 people. And then we have these, you know, two campuses now and all these people get to experience sacred season and get to um, be involved in something that we kind of throw out here and there, you know, during sermons or during just any kind of thing. We're always like, oh, sacred season. And they're all like, what's sacred season? So I'm just, I'm so excited for everybody that's never been able to be a part of it, yeah, yeah. to be able to experience yeah. it and just, you know, like dig deep into who they are as a Christian. And then just like um, Tobena said about um, expecting the blessing instead of like, you know, just kind of praying and saying, oh, I would really love it if it would happen to me. Like, no, expect it. And yeah. no, God's going to yeah. meet you where you're at. That kind of thing. Like, it's so good. Yeah. It's going to be good. Yeah. Man. Good? I'm good, man. I, you know, I, I just, I've seen sacred season change so many people's lives and I've seen God do miraculous things during sacred season. And e even, even this past week, maybe two weeks ago, we got a, a message saying a sacred season prayer was answered here. Right. Um, and, man, it's just amazing watching the difference of walking into a season with expectation and um, and, 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 and it becoming, I feel like that season of expectation should almost become our normal relationship with the Lord, you know, that we should expect him to move and to do incredible things. And, you know, I've, I've seen, you know, we sing that song, um, too good to not believe I've seen cancer disappear. You know, we've seen all of those things in 
every single sacred season. We've seen him do all of those things. And I'm, I'm just expecting God to do incredible things in the series right now that we're in, but also in sacred season this year. I just really, I'm, I'm excited. I think it's going to be absolutely bonkers, awesome, amazing. I think it's, it's going to be one of those things like that. You, you always tell people, you know, um, test God and see what he'll do, you know, with tithing and all that kind of stuff. You say that. And then um, when things start happening for them, like it's super cool to be able yeah. to see, see, I told you, like, this is what God said. Like, this is what the Bible says. You know, um, it's one of those things like new people that have never experienced it before. And then they get that sacred season blessing that they've mm -hmm. been thinking about it just it kind of builds their faith a little bit more and then they yeah they just keep building and building upon it which is really cool. agree totally toughest part of sacred season is what fasting food yeah i like food <laughs> <laughs> caleb toughest part of sacred season time out time in caleb what's your what's the most difficult part of um sacred season for you fasting <laughs> that's all you got short nothing and, short and yep. simple just that simple fasting most difficult part for you um i would say like actually fast i guess it would be a, the part of fasting like fasting a meal is definitely um it's difficult but it's um like doing something spiritually during that time instead, yeah. like mm -hmm. instead of just fasting the meal and going on about your life, actually being intentional with, I'm going to read my Bible during that time, or I'm going to pray during that time. I think that's the hardest for me is to, I can skip a meal. It doesn't bother me a bit to skip a meal, but um, being intentional during that time spiritually is yeah. probably the most difficult. Yeah, thing. I will always, you know, for me, I always try to do things I want, I want that season in my life to look different than the rest of my year looks. And so I always find myself, oh, I'm going to give up TV. And then I'm sitting on the chair as everybody else is watching TV or I'm laying in the bed and we normally watch TV here. And it's like, uh, you know, twiddling your fingers like, what do you do now? And so, like, like you said, you know, trying to find a way to be spiritual or to to not be spiritual, but find a way to replace that with something spiritual um, so that you're growing in that moment is probably the trickiest part to me as well. Um, so yeah, sacred season is going to be amazing. No doubt about it. I hate that it, I don't hate it, but it starts on January 1st this year, which is different for us because the first is a big holiday. Everybody's going to be out the night before staying up till midnight and then coming to church on Sunday, the first, and probably not going to be quite in sacred season mode just yet. Right. Or even a well attended service. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or everybody gonna sleep in because they stayed up too late. Yeah. yeah. Good thing we have two services. So they can come to eight or ten. Yeah. 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 Maybe that time we may have six services. Well, who knows? We'll see what the Lord does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for, for me, um, because I'm not sure about that the first time, but for me, um in sacred season. I'd say it's food as well, like just fasting. Um, I'm just one of one of those that like I literally when I'm hungry, it's a problem. Like mm -hmm. it's a problem. I have to um I have to eat, you know. Um but one thing I've do I have realized just like Maddie was saying is when you do replace the other thing, you I don't think about hunger mm -hmm. at all, you know. The problem is when I'm not doing anything that I just think, Okay, I need to eat, I need to do something, I need to do that. Um but yeah, for me, I'll say that that's definitely the hardest part for me. Yeah, um, it's going to be amazing. Um, put it on your calendar, September or January first through the twenty first. Right. Um, with the twenty second being Sacred Sunday, so it's going to be a special day. Put it on your calendar. It's going to be amazing. Yep. And uh, go ahead and start talking about it in your small groups and in your specialty groups, and um, it's going to be amazing. Going to be a great time. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So anyways, all right. Thank y'all for spending some time with me today. Thank y'all for hanging out. Thank you for letting me talk about sacred season. Caleb, greet the people so they know that you're still there. I'm still here. Love you all. Thank you for joining us. Thank y'all. Peace. Let's Bye. go. Let's go.